I came across this video and the video made a lot of sense to me. And I have a question. Do you believe that these four African countries are the countries the US used to control the remaining parts of Africa? So let's watch this video and I would like to hear from you. Drop your opinions in the comment section. See you at the end of the video. Here are four strategic African countries that the United States and its allies in the West has captured to keep a hold of Africa and keep Africa enslaved. Number one, Nigeria. Yes, if you control Nigeria, you control the whole of West Africa. Nigeria, of course, they've, they've got a good network of roads from Nigeria into other West African countries. Like they've got air transport, world link to all the cities in West Africa. And Nigeria militarily is the biggest. You know, Americans have made Nigeria the biggest military deliberately so that they can easily control West Africa, intimidate other countries. That's how they've kept control. And recently, they pampered the, the Nigerian economy artificially to become Africa's biggest, when it's not true. You cannot have Africa's biggest economy with 13 million people threatened by hunger in 2024. It doesn't happen. You can hear of hunger in South Africa. I mean, Houteng alone in South Africa is the biggest economy. You can't compare with any country, but it's just a district in South Africa. So it's not true that Nigeria is the biggest economy. Americans twerk, 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 twerk. They brought down the South African economy. Remember what they did with the banks, conniving with the banks to bring down the rand and all that so that they should lose track when it comes to standard and poor credit rating? Yeah, that's America trying to pump a Nigeria. And why did they pump a Nigeria like that? They were trying to hit back at South Africa for joining the BRICS. Yeah, you get it? So control Nigeria, you control West Africa. And you know, when they pamper these people, they pamper them socially as well. Nigerians feel like they're top dogs in West Africa, you know? And, you know, talk, you cannot talk to a Nigerian about Pan-Africanism. Have you, have, have, have you heard a Nigerian talking about Pan-Africanism? If there is, very few, but they don't talk Pan-Africanism. You know, they feel like they're top dogs, America is with them and all that. You know, they pamper them socially, deliberately, so that they should have no feelings for any other West African country when he's suffering under the boot of the United States and his allies. And, you know, you, you know Nigerians with Israel, you know, Israel is their, their heaven, their promised land. You, know, to talk, you cannot talk to a Nigerian about genocide in Israel, you know, you, you can't. Because they did a good job of brainwashing Nigerians in that area. You, let's not even go there. <laughs> country number two, Egypt. Yes, control Egypt, you control North Africa. All the countries, Libya, Algeria, Tunisia, Sudan, Ethiopia, they are under Egypt. Egypt is superior militarily, economically, and Egypt is well linked by road, by rail, by air transport, you know, very well linked in North Africa. And as usual, the Americans have pumped the Egyptians to feel that they are most important people in North Africa. So when they hear that this such, such country, like they did to Libya, devastating that country, the Egyptians were just, oh, well, it's none of our business. We're good with the United States, you know. So they have pampered them economically, socially, so that they should have no feelings for any other. Like they are eating on the same table, but they're not really. They're just another African country that they're exploiting, you know, and uh, that's how the United States plays this game. So you control Egypt, you control North Africa. Third country that the United States and its allies strategically controls on the African continent is Kenya. Kenya is well placed strategically. The rails and road networks from Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, all of them connect to Kenya. And they did that deliberately because they want to get a good grip on East Africa. The United States deliberately made the Kenyan army the strongest army. And that's for a reason. They're sending them into Haiti to keep the peace in Haiti. But in actual fact, they're doing the dirty work for the United States in Haiti. They're doing that in Somalia already. They sent their troops in Somalia on the orders of the United States to keep the peace in so much, but they're doing the dirty work there. They're simply trying to make sure that all East African countries are kept in check and the United States keeps its control over the Eastern part of Africa. Yes, <laughs> talk to a Kenyan about Pan-Africanism. <laughs> How many Kenyans have spoken Pan-Africanism? One guy, 
Patrice Lumumba, I give it up to him. I, 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 I give it up to you, sir. You, but he's a lone star. Kenyans don't share the same sentiments with Patrice Lumumba when it comes to Pan-Africanism. He's like a desert flower. Rose. I don't know what they call those flowers that you just find in the days are just there alone in the middle of nowhere. That's Patrice Lumumba. Kenyans have been socially pampered by the Americans to feel superior to everybody in East Africa. It's, there's a reason for that. You know, that's what Americans do best. They pamper you so that you feel nothing for the others who are suffering. Just look at what they've done with our African leaders. They are so rich, they are billionaires, but they are running the poorest countries on earth and they feel no remorse. Fourth country that the United States and its allies in the West control is South Africa. Yes, if you control South Africa, you control the whole of Southern Africa. South Africa has got a good road network into Africa, rail, air, and if you control the South African economy, you control the whole of Southern African economy. And the United States was very scared when they saw that, oh, these guys, they've gone to BRICS. Oh, these guys have kicked Israel out. But Ramaphosa is paying a big price for that because they are coming hard on him. They want to regime change. In this 2024 election, the ANC has lost its majority in parliament. You know, they've divided the South Africans so good. You know, as usual, the Americans, they have pampered the South Africans to make them feel like they're the most special guys in Southern Africa. And they won't care a thing about Pan-Africanism because the Americans do it best. They will pamper you to make you feel important and part of them. And you know, South Africans are light-skinned. Maybe they feel like they're closer to the white skin. Maybe. Because they voted for a white party, DA. The party that says in its manifesto, that they'll never give the land back to the black people. That's the party that South Africans have voted for to keep it in second place and very, very close to power. But the party that speaks Pan-Africanism like the EFF, they've kicked it so far down to fourth place. And very, very soon, the DA might start ruling South Africa, slow by slow. America wants South Africa back and they want to punish Ramaphosa. And the Americans are sending a message that if you stand against America and Israel, you're going to pay the price. And this is the message they're sending to Ramaphosa right now. So the Americans are fighting to get South Africa back. This is exactly what is happening. America has gotten hold of the whole of Africa using four countries, Nigeria, Egypt, Kenya, and South Africa.